So now I've got my text boxes. However, I don't have any images. So we're going to remedy this by using the rectangular frame tool. InDesign is a bit different to programs like Photoshop, Microsoft Word, or Microsoft PowerPoint. It's not advisable for a program like InDesign to just copy and paste from the internet. The reason why is that InDesign uses file searching. What this means is if I place an image in this document, what will happen is that InDesign will use the file's actual physical location to go back and find that image to put all the relevant data into this box. The reason it does this is so it doesn't lose the image quality whilst it does it. What this also means is that if you make changes to the original file, say edit it or crop it, the image within the InDesign document will also change accordingly and update itself live as you change the original image. Likewise, if you move the image, InDesign will be looking in the wrong place for it, so we'll claim the image doesn't exist anymore and it will need relinking. So instead of copying and pasting, we're going to use the rectangle frame tool to place the image. I'm going to create a square just underneath here. And as you can see, I've now created a box that has a cross for it. This is where we're going to put our image. If you go File and go Place, you'll be able to select an image to place inside this document. I already have an image available, which I downloaded earlier, so I'm going to use this. When placing an image, you'll see that you have the option of placing it wherever you like. If I was just to click, the image comes in full size. As you can see, that's much too big. If I was to click and drag, the image come, lets me adjust the size and I can make it as big or as little as I like. However, I've already created a box for my image and I want my image to be this size because it fits in with the rest of the document. So this is what I'll be using. I'll select the text box or rectangular frame box and I'll then go into file place select my image and place it in there. My image is now inside this frame box, but it doesn't quite look like it because at the moment it's just a big gray block. And as we saw earlier, the actual image is of a nice happy dog. So these two can't be the same, surely. In actual fact, they are. And it's because of a feature that InDesign has called content framing. I'll just explain this briefly. Content framing is essentially a frame and a picture as two separate objects. If I click on this, you'll see that I've got a nice blue frame around this image. However, if I went into directly select, clicked on this cursor here, and then clicked on the image, you'll see that the image has now got a brown border around it. If I move this image, you can see that the blue frame is still there but the image is now independent from it. This may seem like it's more hassle, but in actual fact, it gives me much more control over the image. Think of it as a picture frame. You can't put a picture so it's misaligned with the frame, otherwise it would look very odd when it's hanging on your wall. Exactly the same with InDesign. Always make sure that the image is aligned with the frame so it's not cutting off any excess or not visible altogether. There are a number of ways in which we can make sure this is the case. For example, I'm going to stretch out the frame so it's bigger than the image. You'll see there's a lot of white space now. But if I right click on this and go into fitting, you'll see that I have a number of options. The first one I'm going to show you is fit frame to content. If I click that, you'll see that the frame snaps back down so that it's now the same size as the image behind it. If I wanted to do the opposite, I would go on fitting, fit content to frame, and click that, and the image will size up so it's now the same size as the frame is. So how can this help with our image down here in our rectangular frame? We could fit the content to the frame, but you'll see what's happened here. It's been distorted and squished so that it fits in the frame exactly. 
Now this doesn't look good and it's very unprofessional to look at. So we're going to be doing something a little bit more different. We still go under fitting, but we're going to fit content proportionally. What this will mean is that it will shrink the image down, but it'll do so without distorting the image and keeping it in the same proportion as the file data suggests. As you can see now, the image does look a lot better and it's still in proportion, but we still have this white space outside. To remedy that, we can go into fitting again and fit frame to content. As you can see, we now have our image and it fits quite nicely in with our text box. Essentially, all magazine layouts are, just to go back to the example, are text boxes with images behind them. Sometimes they're wrapped around, but we may touch upon that in a later tutorial. For now, think of it similar to a newspaper layout. Text boxes with images. Once you master these basic concepts, you'll find that designing a magazine layout and a template is incredibly easy, and more than that, it's also a lot of fun to play around with. For this next part, I want you to have a go at this and see what you can come up with. I want you to master the basics of text boxes, and I want you to try and bring in some images with the rectangular frame tool, just as we did previously. Thank you very much for listening, folks. I'm very glad that you followed this tutorial, and I hope that it's taught you a lot, and I hope to see some creative and interesting designs from everyone. Thank you very much.